Hey everyone, it is yours truly, the Whiskey Coach, back at it again for review number 99, one away from the big 100. Tonight's review is Parker's Heritage Collection. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in orange curacao barrels. Guys, this is a divisive release. What I mean by that is a lot of folks really like this, a lot of folks hate it. Not a lot of middle ground. Um, Yankees, Red Sox, yeah, bleh, bleh, black licorice, whatever you want to say, whatever comparison you want to draw, love it or hate it, this this is kind of this in, in the whiskey world. Um, 12th release uh, in the Parker Heritage Collection. Um, I'm going to actually kind of read, and it's a little bit boring, I guess, but I think that they did a really good job of explaining um, kind of what exactly this is and, and why they decided to do this um, on, the, uh, on the back of the bottle here. Uh, I'm sorry, on the neck tag. And uh, it says, in 1960, Parker Beam began working at the Heaven Hill Distillery alongside his father, Earl Beam. He took over his sixth generation master distiller in 1975 and won several awards throughout his more than 50 years distilling, including the first ever Parker Beam Lifetime Achievement. In 2010, Parker was unfortunately diagnosed with ALS. Even so, he continued to take pride in his role as master distiller in 19, or I'm sorry, in January of 2017, after a seven-year battle with ALS, Parker passed away. Honoring Parker's commitment to quality whiskeys, Denny Potter was named Master Distiller of Heaven Hill. For the 12th edition, Denny worked closely with Alan Royer, Master Blender, to develop this second barrel-finished bourbon of the Parker's Heritage Collection. A limited number of barrels of premium seven to eight-year-old bourbon were aged in the upper floors of Rickhouse Q there on the campus of Heaven Hill, and then finished for four months in barrels that previously held French orange curacao liqueur. Bottled at 110 proof, non-chill filtered, I know you guys all like that, to preserve all the flavor compounds, the orange curacao finish lends to a unique flavor that complements the bourbon without overpowering it, creating an entirely new and elegant tasting experience. And then the cool thing about this, they, they actually, um, uh, a portion of the proceeds with each bottle sold uh, goes to the ALS Research and Patient Care uh, in, in uh, honor of, of Mr. Beam. So kind of a cool story. Um, we kind of talked about some of the vitals there, seven to eight year old, uh, four months in the orange curacao barrels. It is 78% uh, corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. So that's the bourbon before we got to the orange curacao. Again, very, very divisive. Um, you know, very similar in terms of the presentation, kind of that, that similar Parker's Heritage shape with that kind of beige uh, label that they've always had throughout the releases. Um, Price-wise, um, my buddy Bill Pittman, who is a former uh, co-worker of mine out in Boston, if you're watching Bill, thank you very much, was, was nice enough to pick this bottle up. And uh, he got this at uh, $66.99 for me. You'll see this typically in the $75 to $100 range. Uh, however, I'm always upfront with you guys on this because in case you want to procure a bottle of this today, you'd be looking more in the $150 to $175 range. So that's kind of what it would take to, uh, to land a bottle because you're probably not at this point here, April 2nd, 2019, going to find a bottle on a shelf anywhere if you do. You're lucky. You're your lucky day. Go play the lottery. Um, yeah. So you're probably thinking to yourself, "Hey, coach, what happened, man? You always review everything first with us." Well, I'll be honest. This is this is take two. I uh, have a new phone for work. To try to try to experiment with that, and for some reason, it sounded like somebody was running water the entire time. So I couldn't couldn't use that footage. So uh, this is take two. So. Sorry about that. But, and I'll be honest, I had tried this one before when I was traveling on business uh, here a few months back. I had tried this before, so don't be too hurt. I had tried this before anyways, but um, that's the reason for the non-fresh uh, crack on, uh, on tonight's review. So let's get right to the point. Just orange upon orange upon orange. I said in take one, and I'll say in take two, that it's orange zest completely orange rind it's i mentioned it's the sort of the, you think of the the little orange wedges that you'll see it like a um 
the wedge candy with like the uh, uh, sugary coating, you'll see it like a CVS or a Walgreens or a Walmart. That, that smell hits me uh, up front. There is certainly some, some vanilla, which again, sort of gives that, that like orange sickle kind of uh, approach to your, to your palate. Um, there's, I mean, it's, it's everything you can think of orange is, is just ever present. I can't think of another barrel finished product, whether it's Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey, rye whiskey, rums, I mean, anything that takes on such the character of the barrel that it was finished in, especially considering it, it spent seven to eight years in new charred oak and then four months in orange curacao and just completely, not, not quite overwhelmed, but pretty damn close by that orange influence. But again, if you're not a fan of orange, leave it on the shelf. <laughs> don't, don't buy it on uh, whatever secondary uh, resource you're buying it from. You won't be happy. Because it is ever-present and it is, it is, it's right there in your face. Let's taste it. A lot of the same. Instead of the orange zest, I felt like I get more of the orange rind. So meaning that, you know, more of that like the, the, the white fleshy skin, not, not, the, not the orange itself, but that kind of that earthy, just kind of raw, something you'd use to maybe spice a cake or something like that. You get a little bit of that more on the flavor aspect. You also get, um, it's, it's more dry than I would have liked. It, it's a little more, uh, a little, a little bitter. And that could be from the orange, right? Orange is a little sour. It could be, it could be perceived as bitter in, in, in one way, but it's not quite as viscous as I would like. If you guys have watched my reviews for any time, you know that I like a nice viscousy mouthfeel. Oiliness is something that I personally prefer. It's not that. It's, it's not a short finish because that orange flavor is certainly there throughout, but you're not getting that, um, that sweet, that mellow, that, that, again, that coating experience that you would maybe, that you maybe think, or at least, at least I thought. Yeah, that sip was a little different. Um, it, it gets more, to me, that, that was, what, my second sip here on, on take two, but it's my fourth or fifth now total. To me, like, the longer you taste it, the balance between the orange flavor, orange Tic Tacs, um, um, uh, I wouldn't say orange juice, none of that, but the candy, the natural orange flavor, but then also that sweetness, the little bit of spice that you want in a bourbon starts to sort of balance out and kind of your, your, your taste buds and your palate kind of picks up both and starts to appreciate both. The nose is completely orange. The first reaction you get when you taste it is completely orange, but the balance sort of comes as you, as you begin to kind of get to know it and as it sort of mingles in your glass and maybe the air uh, has something to do with that but I like it personally guys I don't know if you're gonna like it again if you're on the fence I, hopefully if your takeaway is nothing else that it's very orangey right don't walk into this thinking it's maybe want to be one of those passive barrel finishes it's not it's aggressive it's up front it's there throughout the tasting experience I personally really liked it but if, again if you don't like orange probably again leave, leave it where it lies um, I enjoyed it be a little adventurous. Try something off of the off of the norm. If you have somebody that likes something that may be a little different, you know, you want to you want to again get off the beaten path. It's a great pickup. It, it really is, and it's again you're supporting a good cause if nothing else. And Parker Beam and, and his family and ALS. So from a score perspective, I'm going to give this an eight point one. Uh, that's all I got, guys. Thanks. Next review will be review number one hundred. Until next time, and as always, glasses up. <laughs>